So I'm so glad you're all here. I'm Dr. Susan Blumberg, and I am a parenting and family coach. I work with families of kids, teens, and young adults to develop healthy communication and make lifestyle changes that are dealing with issues in their families. So I'm thrilled to be here, but what I also do in those families and with people like ourselves is I teach about planning and organization skills because so many of the families I deal with, that's one of the number one issues that they bring to me. We can't get organized. We can't get out the door on time. My team never finishes their homework at a reasonable hour. We can't get, you know, we're always rushed around in the morning so we forget stuff <laughs> and so when Stacy and I talked about what I might have to share ding 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 this was the number one thing we wanted to talk about so I'm going to start with a confession there's a project I didn't get finished this month why not I never wrote it into my schedule and so I have a every other week accountability pod I meet with three of my colleagues and a coach from my coaching program, a year long coaching program I'm involved in. And we meet every other week to talk about stuff we're working on. And I confessed that there was a project I was not making any progress on because I had neglected this past month to write any time into my schedule about it. And he said, well, you need to bring that to your presentation today. And I said, yes, I already planned to do that. So I'm going to tell you about a mistake that I made because I didn't take responsibility for planning it into my schedule. So several months ago, I undertook a training to become what's called a dare to declare vision board facilitator. And here's an example. Some of you have been in my office because I know a few of your faces um, know that I am starting to provide here at uh, RISE vision board coaching workshops for professional women like ourselves. So what I do is over a six hour day long workshop is provide coaching in understanding our dreams, our visions and our goals for the future. This is not just cut up magazines, though, again, some of you who walk by my office have seen that I have an entire wall. So I see some smiles. Some of you have seen this. What I did was, is I wrote to on that next door app, do some of you belong to that, where we talk about lost cats, and did anybody hear those backfiring cars, and does anybody know a good plumber? Well, I did something that is part of a, um, I, I want to say an affirmation that I believe in, and that affirmation is ask, believe, receive. And there is actually some neuroscience behind this, where when you have positive affirmations and positive beliefs towards your business, towards your goals, towards your visions for the future, and you're welcome to all go and look at mine during the course of today's session, that if you believe in what you're asking for, if you direct your positive thinking towards what you want to have happen, it's more likely to recur to occur. And so I put out that thought. I sent out my next door app that I was starting a vision board business. And instead of having to have my clients go out and purchase literally hundreds of dollars worth of magazines, because any of us who purchase magazines know they're like $5.99, $6.99. It's amazing how expensive magazines have gotten recently. So I asked my neighbors to share. You know, do they have old magazines lying around? And you know what? I've gotten thousands. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thousands. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? I put that out two months ago. I have a box on my front porch, and I would say three times a week, people are still bringing me <laughs> magazines. <laughs> I really need this vision board business to get off the ground because I don't know what I'm going to do with them all. You know, if you walk by my office, I have one of the private offices on the far wall. You're welcome just to peek in. I have a whole wall of blue. Those are the uh, cardboard magazine holders that I have filled. I have probably a third again as many in my garage right now. So I really need people to come. And I'm going to talk to you about when my next one is scheduled. And you'll start seeing because what I did 
is I neglected to write in my schedule this month any time to market my next vision board workshop, which is supposed to be Saturday, if anyone is interested. <laughs> Please come speak to me after this workshop, because the four warm leads that I had set up, I checked in with them all on Monday and Tuesday, and lo and behold, none of them had held the date. So I have an empty workshop on Saturday if anyone is interested in it at a discount. But I'd like you to just come look at the vision board because the really important thing about a vision board is that we cr can create in real life what we're creating in our mind. But it starts with organizing our time. So we're gonna talk today about three ways to organize our time. We're gonna prioritize, we're gonna create task lists, and we're gonna find time in our schedule, which is the thing I didn't do this past month. So let's look at, talk about planners versus schedules. Can anyone tell me the difference? Do any of you know the difference? <laughs> I know, we really never think about it. We think of them as the same thing, and they're not. So I actually keep my schedule in my phone. That's my appointments. That's my schedule. But my planner is much more complex than that. I'm going to pass it around so you can look at it. I'm relatively proud of what's in it right now. <laughs> In my planner, think of the word plan, is my plan for what I'm working on. Now, this is a particular brand called Panda, so it's got a cute little panda face. It comes in like 16 colors. My one for the fall was purple. This season, I picked turquoise. I don't know what color I'll do next. Um, I organize what I'm doing. I prioritize what I'm doing. And I have both short-term and long-term plans. What you'll see, and I'm literally going to just pass this out to you, I have, I can't do it upside down, things I'm grateful for, things I'm excited about. My affirmation, right now for the past couple of months, my affirmation is I'm in control of my choices. Oh, sorry, I can take a step this way so that that looks better, thank you. It has my priority list, and I'm going to talk in a minute about how to set that up. It does have my schedule of my appointments, but it also has a task list and an end of the day review. Do any of you use a planner that's like this? A couple of you do. Okay, I'm gonna pass it around for those of you who don't. Tell me why you've chosen a planner like that. Go ahead. Um, I've always used a paper planner, always. We have one of these for every year of my business. Uh -huh. And when I'm about two years over, it goes in with my taxes for that year. Um, I write everything in pencil. So Mine's in pencil that. also. <laughs> and so when you said, bring your planner, and I sat down with my pen, I'm like, oh, but I can't write in it with my pen. <laughs> yeah. So what keeps the page in my planner is my daily to do. So right. My daily to do and my planner are always together. together. And if I schedule something in my phone, I lose it. I don't look at it. I don't like it to be technological. I need to see it. And I need to like visualize it. And if somebody says, oh, can you do something on blah, blah, blah? I'm like, what's that date? And it'll remind me of a number. And I can see in my mind if there's something on that square. Ah. And then I can go back and look at it. Okay. And if I'm really running around busy, I'll just take a picture of my month. And then I have a picture in my phone and I can remember it. Okay. But otherwise, I'm completely lost. Right. Yeah. Now, I couldn't use a planner like yours because I do much more in a day than one of those little squares could hold. Well, that's what I'm going to use. That's what the to-do list is for. Is. <laughs> okay. This is my day. <laughs> <laughs> so this is another version of a planner where it starts with, and this one's blank because I just got a blank copy to show people. Um, actually, I think I might have done a... Uh, test one one week. I'm not actually sure I ever tried it. No, I didn't. Um, this is a version of a planner that a lot of people really love who like to-do lists. And I'm going to talk about to-do lists in a minute. On the top of this planner, you take all the tasks you have for the whole week. 
You just brainstorm. Every task you have for the whole week, doesn't matter what day it is, doesn't matter what task it is, I'm gonna show this to the computer now that I remember. <laughs> Okay, and you brainstorm every task you have for the whole week. You then sort them into daily chunks. Okay, now that I know my tasks for the whole week, let's sort them into daily chunks. And then we can look at what our appointments are. So the bottom is the schedule, the top half is the plan. I'm gonna just pass that around. I know people are looking, wow, all these different kinds. We didn't know it existed. But you didn't know because you didn't know the difference between a schedule and a planner. So someone who only uses a schedule and doesn't use a planner like these, can you tell me why? I guess I get a little overwhelmed at planning. And then I, put, I was thinking like, if I was allowed to write down all the things I wanted to do, I would write down, I would be like, I need to overhaul my whole basement and I don't even have a basement, you know? <laughs> so. Right. So let's, we're gonna talk about that. So, so what I'm passing out now are two planners that are meant for students. So from middle school through college, and that doesn't go by age, the college student can be an adult, but what I'm passing out are planners that are meant for students. So you can see there's spaces for homework, there's spaces for due dates, and it still says priority. Does this homework have to be done tonight because it's due tomorrow? Or is it homework that doesn't have to be done for a week? So then maybe it's not priority one, it's priority two or three because I have homework that's due before some other homework and so you're writing things down and these are the planners i use with my team clients and i'm sharing these because i want you to be thinking about this the difference between a planner and a schedule so what happens when we don't use a planner i have to remember which computer to hold <laughs> when we use a planner we have the opportunity to write down priorities and I know you've already had at least one session about this. So I want to talk again about how do we choose our priorities. And if you have your planner with you, you can open it to this week. This would be a good time to do that. And think about looking back on this week or looking forward to next week. When you write your task list, is it a, I've written a list of eight or 10 things to do back? Or do you pick, one, two, and no more than three things that absolutely must be done on that day, and other tasks are more malleable. Yeah, you can, no one needs to look, you can pass it back forward. Right? So the reason to have a priority list is that those are things that you absolutely must get done. You can't leave those things out but it doesn't have to be all business related. So I have a client who, if he doesn't get in his daily run, he's no good, he's just no good. He, had, he himself has ADHD, he has two young children with ADHD, and he works in a very high pressure business from home. So he has to work around getting his two kids out the door to school, they're back in in-person school this year, getting back home in time to start because he's working from home and getting his work day done before kids get home from school. If he doesn't get up at 5 a.m. and have a daily run, his brain is toast. It's like he really needs to clear himself before the kids are up and before the routine starts. So for him, every day on his priority list is that daily run. So a priority list doesn't just have to be about work tasks. And some of you looked and saw on my priority list. So today, look, it said rise was on my priority list. I had to be here for this presentation. I'm also giving a free parenting workshop from 7 to 8.30 tonight. I have five people signed up for that. I can't miss that today. <laughs> I also have 29 LinkedIn posts waiting to be written. I worked on my grid, it says from grid. 
So this morning I set up my grid. That's how I know there's 29. I worked on a grid of content across the top and types of posts and worked on that grid today. That those were my three priorities. So now it's 1220. I've done two out of my three priorities for the day. I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> Right now, yesterday, just to tell you, planning those LinkedIn posts didn't happen yesterday, but it happened today. I didn't get it. I did see. So it said LinkedIn posts didn't happen. I wrote it today. Right, LinkedIn post from Grid. There's the check mark. I did it. I do. I do. So I time block everything I do. We'll talk about that in a minute. No, no, you're absolutely. So the point about prioritizing this is it must be more important than any other task you have that day. So that was the most important task I had to accomplish this week was writing those 29 posts, was figuring out what those 29 posts were gonna be. And I didn't do it yesterday for whatever reason. When I had free time, when I had it blocked off, it was kind of like marketing my vision board workshop. I didn't do it. But today, right before this workshop, I went ahead and did it. You did all 29. No, I didn't write them. I had to make my grid. I had to make my grid. So what you'll actually see if you looked ahead to Saturday, was it? Yep. Saturday, I've written in, uh, come to rise and work on all my business and client calls my my posts and, and spreadsheets i've set for saturday i think that's probably um penance for not being able to do my workshop that day okay so the key piece is write it that day or the night before do not write your top prioritizing list in advance why not Right. We don't write priority. We write our tasks in advance. We might write the whole week's worth in advance. We might write our schedule in advance, but we don't write our prioritizing list because we may not know until we wake up that morning what the priority is. So task lists, everyday list of work. We know it has to be done, but usually one day is as good as the next. What are some examples? Okay, so this, I was gonna ask, so you have this and then you also have to be at the workshop tonight. So, and then you have the LinkedIn post. So then everything else is gravy. I guess my, yeah. what about the things that are, like I teach a class today that I don't really have to prepare for, but I gotta be there. But that's not really, it doesn't feel like a priority. No, it's just a task. Okay. You have to be there, but it's not your priority. Okay. Okay. So I still have tasks to do today. I went to my accountability pod. I did a clubhouse room okay. today. Got it. I, I posted on LinkedIn this morning. Um, my VA sent me um, the draft of my email blast that's going out tomorrow. I did all that already today too. But it's a task, not a priority. It's a task, oh. not a priority. See, that's going to help you. Oh, right? that's a I time. See. If it's more than three, it's not a priority. It's a task. It's a task. The, pre the, the task should align with the priority. Not necessarily, like my client has his daily run. If he doesn't get that daily run in, he knows his energy and his passion, is, he's gonna slog through his day. So that's a priority. So that's a priority. So today, this presentation was my priority. I had to pick my blouse. I had to <laughs> make sure my PowerPoint you know, was perfect. I had to, you know, make sure my my um, computer was plugged in in my office for my Zoom calls this morning, so it wasn't going to die during this presentation, right? This presentation was my priority, more important than my accountability call, my clubhouse room. Those are my tasks for today, but wasn't my priority. Being on for you guys, having my full energy to be here, that's my priority. 
<laughs> you can call it, you know, you could call it what, whatever phrase makes sense to you. If calling it a super task, to me, it's the task I want to give the most energy and passion to that day. That I will, if I don't get all my other tasks done, but I've met my three priorities, I will feel accomplished. So today, if my three priorities were this workshop, my parenting workshop, and completing that LinkedIn grid, because I didn't do it yesterday. If I get those three things done, I will sleep better tonight. Now, so tomorrow, that's funny. I have three things written down I'm doing, but I have no priorities written down yet. In fact, I don't have a, pe a pencil with me, but I'll use a pen. No, I'm good because I know I'm doing this tomorrow. Oh, I'm doing the, I've just accepted co-moderating a clubhouse room tomorrow from one to four. Didn't write it down yet. Not sure that's my priority for the day yet, but I'm putting it in my schedule. But my priorities aren't written in yet for tomorrow. Don't know what they're going to be. Might not know till the morning. Might figure it out tonight. There are some days when I only have one priority written. Again, I see a day last Saturday. I said I was going to do content. Didn't do it. Did it on Sunday. Checked off. So it's whatever's going to make me feel that I have the most energy and passion for. But those task lists, those are the other stuff that on our schedule, the other appointments, the other, our emails, right? The emails, you know, you have to knock on. A contract, you have to sign uh, or review. Um, any paperwork you have to do. A client already emailed me this morning something that wasn't on my list. I had to respond to an email I got. I've already written back to her. Those are all on my tasks, but they're not priorities. So let's talk about tools to make this doable. I am super big on color coding. I have three different sizes of post-it notes here that I took out of my desk drawer. So I have the little tag ones where I might insert into my planner or into a book or into a paper I'm working on. I have the medium-sized ones where I might write a quick note from a phone call. And I even have big ones where I might have to write a longer note because I can't fit it all on one of the smaller ones. You know, I teach the students I work with. Um, yep, I'm too close again. <laughs> Thank you, Emory. I teach the students I work with, for example, if they're reading a book, um, to stick these little notes just down the side of the page. They don't even have to write anything on it because it's going to remind you, the color is going to remind you to go back that here's something important I have to pay attention to. Same thing in my planner. My planner has three <laughs> of these pretty ribbons to remind me of something important to go to. And it has an elastic one to tell me what page I'm in. Um, forgive me, I just forgot your name. Annie. Annie uses her pad of paper to keep track of the right page in her planner, right? Now, those of you who are using computers as your schedule or planner, how do you keep track? Do you use a color coding system on your schedules to show you what's more important? Did you? Okay, so if you're using an app for a Google Calendar on your iPhone, they all will color code your home calendar and your work calendar, but you can also color code, you can flag and color code more important things as well. Yes? Yeah, I use a lot of colors. So my mm -hmm. color is bright green for market and square for money. <laughs> <laughs> See, I needed that to remember to do my vision board workshop. Yeah. I am now going to find bright green ones to add to my list. Go ahead. Yellow is internal staff. Orange is client. So that I can look at it and say, I've got two clients to meet tomorrow. I've got to be on the and prepare for those two days before and getting all the forms. So that color is what helps me. And are you doing this on paper or online? So you 
Yep. And what program is this? Outlook Calendar. Outlook Calendar. Right. Google has it as well. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, let me come back to you. I have a recommendation for that. I absolutely will. Annie, yeah. go ahead. That's why I use it. Yeah, that's why yeah. I keep everything on that. And if I can glance, like I like the monthly one, so I want to see everything from far away. If there's an empty day an empty box, I will start before that. And I will leave it with you, and I won't tell anyone. And so we'll be like, oh yeah, okay. So like, obviously we no, want to talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I was going to say is Gmail also has the color coding. So mm -hmm. And I did the same thing. I put green on all my invoices. Orange is everything that I've sent to another client. Yellow is all my clients. But that's actually right. helpful. Yeah, I think the color coding is absolutely important. I don't color code in my planner because I'm the only one who looks at it. Where I do color code is my family calendar. <laughs> so there are both paper and digital versions of family calendars um, that you can use to not have to have. So I talked to one colleague who told me she kept five calendars. I was tired just listening to her. <laughs> she had a personal calendar. She had her family calendar and she had two different work calendars because she had a part-time job and a full-time job. And then she had a calendar that she used for sort of like anything that didn't fit on everything else. Like if she was going out for coffee with a girlfriend or something, literally she had five different calendars. She had a paper, couple of paper ones. She had a couple of online ones. I was tired just talking to her. And I would miss appointments when that happened. So I really recommend a family calendar, which we actually, again, use a paper one in my field because we started doing this. So, I mean, I've been doing it since my kids were little and they're in their twenties now. So before I had access to everything online. And so I like the Sandra Boynton one. Do you like her hippos? So, so she's a cartoonist who does these amazing chickens and hippos and rabbits. So on that calendar, every member of my family has their own color. The dates are down this side, our names across the top. And the only things written on the family calendar are th things that affect more than one person in the family. So my daughter doesn't drive, she takes public transportation, but she was going to school in Boulder. And when the weather was bad or there was, during the pandemic, if she needed transportation to Boulder, those days had to go on the family calendar because my husband or I would have to drive her. Right? So that affected us. Otherwise, I didn't care. My husband's schedule, he's been doing two weeks at home, two weeks in the office. Two, well, as of this week, he's now two days at home, three days in the office. If that's not written on the calendar, I don't know where my husband is. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not sure which days they are yet. So those things, things, and with me, the same way. I'm Am I in my office or am I at RISE? People want to know. So we have to write those things on the fam. But what my appointments are, nobody cares. However, I do evening workshops twice a week. Why do you think other people need to know? Somebody else has to cook dinner. <laughs> Somebody else has to cook dinner those nights. So they need to know what nights I'm doing workshops because then my adult daughter or husband are responsible for cooking dinner. Therefore, they have to know what nights I'm working late. Otherwise, they don't care which nights I'm working late. The other nights, they expect me to cook dinner. <laughs> right? So it all comes down to what information you have to share. Now, there are some wonderful calendars that combine both family and um, uh, work. There's one called Cozy, C-O-Z-I, that people just love. 
Um, we have already mentioned, in, uh, was it with you, Trello? Oh no, Marjorie, who wasn't able to come today. Trello is another one that's really useful because they do, they call them cards. And so you can have cards for each task and then it breaks down into smaller steps and reactions. So you can have cards for home, cards for work, cards for individual activities, breaks down really well. There's one called Click It. And a lot of this depends on, um, you know, whether you're working from a computer, you know, I use my iPad, so I, I work from a PC, but I live on an iPhone and an iPad. So everything I use has to be able to translate back and forth. A OneNote, OneNote has a planner app. So if you use OneNote, which um, I use for all my note taking now, because I can use it both on my computer and on my iPad, now has a planner app connected to it. So I have all this information. Let me show you here. It's great. Google tells us that that works. Yes, you can. Yeah. It is not as smooth as everyone would like. I, I know you can, but Google Calendar, because it has home, family, business, and is color codable, works very well to keep, you just have to remember your color coding. The issue here is consistency. Always is consistency. There's no question about it. So I wanted to just, I, I have all these tools up here. I showed this one to Anne-Marie who said, oh, this would be so great at my reception desk. This is another kind of very easy calendar. It literally rips off each week. This is a wonderful calendar to have when you just need to write a note for the family. You know, this would be perfect for my family for the days I go to ride. And I just write rise on the three or four days a week I'm here. And for my husband to write, these are the two days I'll be in the office. And then every week, if those days change, it's easy to, and that was like, you know, I don't know, $8.99 at Target or something. So it's easy to use and easy to adapt when you're talking about scheduling, right? As opposed to the planner where you need to be able to put all this other information about your activities. Okay. Questions, comments? Tell me if that one note planner has something. Yeah, it's, it's an additional, I believe it's an, um, like an extension you have to, it's an extension you have to add. But I have my um, OneNote set up, so I have conferences in one notebook. I have coaching in one notebook. I have additional notes in a separate notebook. They have, have these notebooks off to the side. Right, and any of you are welcome to just pop your head in my office. I'm usually here Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. <laughs> I should put one of those on my door. You're absolutely right. Um, it is a really, it's exactly what that sort of thing is for that makes it so helpful. Um, um, and then I can show you how to use it. But I believe it's just, it's in one of those extensions. It's not a page. Um, so the OneNote Planner, and then there's one called Passion Planner, where you can say what add-ons you want. So Passion Planner is literally a digital planner where there's like 50 different pages and you click and purchase the ones you want in your digital planner. So it's, it's a create your own version of a digital planner. Okay, so I'm going backwards for a minute because I wanna get back to consistency and I'm overwhelmed and desks like this, right? So I'm very good with my desk here because you all have to look at it. I know you can see it. At home, I'm doing really pretty well because my desk is very narrow. It's literally half the width of one of these. Um, but what I'm finding myself doing is I have clients all day long on Zoom because I see kids and families. And I take my notes, the ones that I keep in files, not my professional notes that I do in OneNote. And I end up with a stack of notes to be filed on the side of my desk. 
And right now it's pretty high. I haven't filed in a couple of weeks. So every other weekend or so, I have to take that stack of paper and file it. I feel like I'm <laughs> you know, um, sending rocks into the water. I have to take all those notes and put them in the correct client files so that the next time I see that client, I have to be able to look at the notes and remember what we talked about, right? I don't do all of, because of privacy concerns, when I directly see a client one-on-one -on -one because of the kind of family coaching I do, I don't take those notes digitally. I still take those on paper. But this morning I noticed the stack was a little higher than usual. I think I missed doing it last weekend again. Like my vision board marketing, I seem to have missed a task. And so when you have a desk that looks like this, the research says cluttered spaces lead to stress. I don't think any of us were surprised. But what was surprising was that clearing up our spaces also led to stress. That seemed a little counterintuitive to me because I think most of us would say we'd feel better after we cleaned up our cluttered spaces, but that's not what people reported. And that's not what the research has found. People found that when we got rid of things, that stressed us out. Why do you think? Or you're gonna lose something. Right? You might lose something important. You might throw it away by accident. Right? So getting rid of your clutter was just as stressful as keeping it. So what the hell do we do? <laughs> well, the real reason to organize is not just to get rid of clutter. It's to save time. That's the point of this presentation, right? It's not because it's messy or that you're embarrassed if people come into your house or you feel like a pack rat. It's because when you're organized, you save the time. The time, you know, I think it's in that pile. Oh my God, the next time I see this client, I can't just go to the folder. I have to shift, you know, sift through eight or 10 pieces of paper to find the notes on that client. That wastes my time. Right? What can I do with that time instead? Someone give me an idea. A priority, yeah. <laughs> I, I could work on my priorities. What else could I do with that time? I could have self-care time. I could, I have a new puppy. My puppy is uh, four months old. Her name is Blue. Do any of you old enough to remember Blue's Clues? <laughs> oh my God, it's actually, we didn't name her. Her name was already Blue, but it was one of the reasons we got her because that was my son's favorite TV show when he was little. He's 22 now. She's a Chihuahua miniature Schnauzer mix. So she only weighs like 11 pounds, but she has the smooth Chihuahua coat and she is so cute. If she'd only just stop peeing and pooping in the house, she'd be perfect. So she's in a kennel right now in my sunroom. It's the longest day, five hours, that we've left her in the kennel so I could be here because everyone's at work today in my house. One of those rare days when all of us left the house at the same time. But I could go and pet my puppy. Wouldn't that be so much more fun than sifting through the papers? <laughs> So this is actually, I need this. If we didn't have to sift through the clutter, we could have time for ourselves. So my business coach calls that the deep breath. How many of you build in time on your planner, not just your schedule, for a deep breath? Only one of you. Well, that makes two of us. <laughs> Why do you do it? Do you ever do that in the afternoon? Okay. Yes. Every single business day, I want to encourage all of you, open your planner right now. All of you, come on, open the 
those computers. Well, thank you. I'm going to talk about that too, because I have it. I'm going to tell you what my watch tells me, but I want you all to open your planner for tomorrow and find 15 minutes when you're not going to do a task. So 15 minutes is all I'm asking you. Have a cup of tea, go talk to somebody, call your mother. I haven't called my mother this week. It's in my schedule, but um, she moved into a new apartment and the timing has been off. My mother lives on the East Coast, so I always have to filter in that two hour time difference. Okay, so my question. Yep. You put in a Hard and fast. Okay. I'll call you back. <laughs> a client calls, don't answer it. Absolutely. 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 I it took me a long time to learn to do this. But it's like my client. I please tell me your name again. Sam or my client who, if he doesn't do his run at 5 a.m., just slogs through his day, find 15 minutes for yourself. You're worth 15 minutes. It's a deep breath. So tell me about your watch and what it tells you to do, and then I'll call on you, Shelby. Oh, what does your watch tell you? How many times a day? Whenever it does. Too many. <laughs> Okay, so mine goes, I have to stand up for one minute every hour. So eight times a day. I have to breathe a minimum of three times a day. That's one minute of breathing. And I have to move 400 calories worth. I have a pretty heavy relaxation schedule built into my watch. So all I'm telling you is I practice what I preach. Okay, except about that damn vision board workshop. <laughs> it's bothering me today, in case you hadn't noticed. Why do I have three minutes of breathing? So when I'm seeing a client or I'm in a training workshop, I have a little plastic box, one of those little, I bought it at Target. You know, I think my kids used to take it to camp to put their shampoo and soap in. And I have it in front of my computer and I put my iPad, which is where my OneNote is, and I just stand up during my meetings because it tells me I have to stand up eight times a day because it's better for my tush and my sciatica. I'm old, I have sciatica, I apologize. <laughs> so there, it, I am old, I'm in my 60s, everybody. Um, but the whole point of this is, is it reminds me to take that time out of my day so I put my little blue box in front of my computer, I tilt my screen back, and I stand for several minutes every hour because I need to do that. And if I miss doing that, I feel worse because then my sciatica kills me and when I try to stand up after a few hours of sitting in that chair, oy, does it hurt, okay? So by keeping this, by having my organization on my desk, by having my priorities in my planner and by having my phone remind me to stand up, move around and breathe, I'm actually more effective at my job. How do you feel about that? So I think everything you say is like, But helping you keep to it is the hard part. Well, it's, that's when you make the watch feel smart and how important it is to have discipline on yourself. Absolutely. Um, I think that's so important. Mm -hmm. And so I want to introduce a really big idea. I want you to think about totally revamping your schedule around tasks instead of time. So that instead of saying, all right, I have this much time in a day, so I'm going to have meetings, 
I'm going to do tasks, I'm going to do my priority, I'm going to write content, all in the same day. Think about reorganizing your day so that each day is dedicated to a particular kind of task. I'm seriously working towards this right now. So that one of the coaches I work with, my business coach, spends two days a week only doing connecting calls. That's what she does on Mondays and Tuesdays. She gets on LinkedIn, she gets on Facebook, and that's her day to make connecting calls. She doesn't write content that day. She doesn't hold client meetings those days. She spends those days and she makes literally 200 calls in two days because that's her job. Her job is to bring in new connections to the business. But she doesn't dilute it by doing 30 this day and 30 this day and 30, and I'll get to it. And some days it's in the morning and some days it's in the afternoon. She's dedicated and professional. And then one day she has her training seminars and other days are for you know, meetings and other days are for different tasks. What I really like about this is that I won't be distracted and therefore lose time. So I am seriously considering having a content. I was doing this, it used to be Sunday afternoons and I got distracted and I have to produce so much more content now that my business has grown, and I'm grateful as hell for that, please don't hear anything else except how much my business has grown, that I'm seriously considering having a content day, a business connection day, then I have two days a week that I'll see my clients. Now, there may be days when I'm doing workshops and providing other services, but the main focus of my day is going to be around my task not around my time. And when you look at what people like Tony Robbins, like other big time coaches, what other business people are doing, a lot of people are moving towards this. And so when I hear somebody say, I get distracted, I'm doing this and then I get a call. So I go to the call and I don't go back to the task I've started. Or I can't even take 15 minutes for myself because I see that it's my client on the phone and I go to the client instead of keeping my word that I'll stay for that 15 minutes, I want to suggest that you consider something like this. It's a big shift in how we think about our business, but one that might be profitable. I want to offer one more. Um, we've already talked about those deep breaths, so I'm going to leave that off. Think about this. Think about recurring tasks you can eliminate. Can you delegate them? Can you defer them? We've already talked about that. Are they not a priority today? Can you ditch them? Do you do some tasks that really are busy work? You just don't need to do that? Or can you just sit down and do it and get it over with? So I have this written at my desk at home. Delegate, defer, ditch, and do. I have it on a sticky note <laughs> by the side of my computer because there are just some tasks like today, the client wrote to me, uh, we're looking for you to answer this school email. I could have waited, I could have postponed it. I did it immediately, got it off my plate. It's done, I don't have to worry about it. Do you so, ever yeah, go ahead. schedule like a block of time for each day? Like to just have an hour of day of just mindful or shifting. Like, do you have things that come in at the last minute? Do you just think I'm gonna knock that out just I have not, but I think that's brilliant. What I tend to do is write it on my task list in my planner and then get to it each time I get back to my task list. But I think that's a brilliant way to do it. Absolutely brilliant. What that also does is keep you organized and help you from getting distracted by tasks that are less important. You know, my husband has ADHD and so does my son. And I've learned you can't give them three instructions at the same time because they only hear the last one and they didn't hear the first one. And so you can only tell them one thing at a time unless it, you don't want it to get done. So if I had that a half hour at the end of every day to clean up those emails and so on, that would be hugely helpful. Thank you for the idea. Before I take the last question, 
I just wanted to say, this feels so much better. It really does. By cleaning up your time, you take the power back over. As in, instead of letting your schedule and your, oh my God, I'm running in this direction, I'm running in this direction. Don't let your phone and your email have control over you. You do have control over it. It's a choice that you're making. Thank you. And I'm here to take any other questions.